And I think the leading innovators and the, and, the, and the leading companies getting stuff done understand, too, that this is a long road. Yeah. And it could be a very successful road. And actually one that really understands that is coming on the line right now and is a good friend of the Institute and will be a speaker at next week's Private Exchange Forum, as well as a sponsor is Scott Carver, president and founder of Plan Source. Scott, good morning. Good morning. How are you, Doug? Good, my friend. Good to have you on again. <clears throat> Thank you. Good to be here. Yeah, look forward to seeing you uh, real soon. Uh, you know, Scott, you, you've had some uh, interesting news this week. Uh, tell our audience about it. We sure have. Uh, we just completed a, a Series C funding round, um, and we saw an investment by uh, a great company and a great partner, Great Hill Partners, uh, they invested $70 million in plan source, and we're, uh, we couldn't be more excited. It just gives us a terrific opportunity to accelerate our, our innovation and our product roadmap and uh, create some infrastructure around that and, and really prepare ourselves ahead of um, what's been a, a pretty phenomenal uh, growth history and one that we see continuing and even accelerating. So, yeah, we're yeah, really excited. Yeah, first of yeah, all, congratulations. Uh, I, I know you've been working hard on that. You and I have talked about that along the way. And uh, uh, so congratulations. And you and I have also talked about the fact that uh, to be successful in this business, you, you, you know, you've got to continue to innovate. You need to have fuel in the tank to get this down the road because there's big opportunities to, to serve this market well. And so talk a little bit about what your plans are going forward, you know, where you've come to date and, and what are your plans going forward. Well, uh, as as you know, Doug, um, we've been uh, well steeped in the benefits engagement and exchange uh, technology business, um, and we see um, a continued adoption of benefits technology across our broker constituents, across the mid market, large market. It, it's really um, it's it's really been interesting to watch the adoption rate and the level of interest in technology, whether it it exists within an exchange model or in a more traditional benefits portfolio. And and so you know our plans are to, as I said, you know leverage that um, the, the new funding that we have to uh, again stay ahead of our our product roadmap, innovate. Uh, be able to deliver the types of tools around decision support, consumer-facing uh, tools, and so forth to to really address what we see is a very changing marketplace, um, going from a, a very much a wholesale model to a, a retail model. And so those of us who have been in this industry for a while uh, need to adapt to that change, and, and you know this funding will allow us to do that. You know, that uh, was interesting. The Wall Street Journal article compared uh, com um, that covered this initial and uh, covered this investment compared to you to Zenefits. Um, what's your uh, take on that, and what are, and what are the differentiators? Yeah, I think they said you, know, you were going to take benefits. on Zenefits. What's that? <laughs> Well, I, you know, I don't know if it's if it's necessarily take on Zenefits, but you know, Zenefits has done a phenomenal job of creating interest around the convergence of brokerage services and technology. And uh, the one thing that has been part of our foundation and our history is that we have always built tools for our brokers to become more effective advisors and service suppliers to their customers. And so, you know, where Zenefits competes directly with brokers, we build tools to help them, uh, as I said, become more effective advisors to their customers. And, and so um, in that respect, we think we offer a really compelling value proposition for uh, the retail brokerage industry that, well, let's face it, is is – very much a dominant force in the in the delivery of employee benefits and health care in this country. I think broker, you know, we would tend to agree with you here, Scott, that, you know, people uh, have 
kind of undervalued a real quality advisor. And those advisors out there that are trying to remain very relevant and are progressive and are moving to change them are, have, have a very definite role in this marketplace going forward. Absolutely. I couldn't agree with you more, Doug. I think, um, you know, the, the landscape is becoming more complex. It's becoming more confusing when you think about exchanges and the various types of exchanges and the proliferation of new technologies coming on to help um, this this kind of fundamental shift from, as I said, this wholesale to retail model. I think a lot of employers are looking for um, some direction and advice. And, you know, the brokers have an incredible opportunity in front of them to be a much more comprehensive a solution provider for their customers rather than just providing insurance procurement. It really takes on a, a much broader, full-blown HR and, and strategic role for, for their clients. Um, Scott, Ron Bachman here. Um, yeah, the death of uh, agents has been predict predicted for a long time and uh, hasn't happened, and I don't think it's going to happen. I think a lot of people thought that uh, insurance agents were kind of going to go the way of travel uh, agents out there, but I think health insurance is a whole different type of a market. A little more complicated. A little bit more complicated, a little bit more hands-on after the, the sale as well. But, you know, at the end of the day, the Institute for Healthcare Consumerism uh, tries to figure out how does it affect the end user, the customer, the uh, uh, the policyholder out there, whether it's an individual policyholder or an employee who's got part of a, a group plan. How do you see the advent of private exchanges really affecting the average consumer? Well, I think the, the advent of exchanges has really elevated the interest in creating tools to help individuals sort through all the complexities that you've described. So when you think about a private exchange where people might be faced with a broader portfolio of options, um, and then also be armed with maybe some funds that they have some discretion around, um, the, the technology that's being developed to help people through that process has been, it, it's been incredible to watch happen. And when I think about, you know, our product roadmap, I would tell you that most of our investment is around that consumer experience. It is personalization. It is... Um, you know, having some intuitive tools that walk and guide people through a selection and an, and an, and an analysis process. So, um, it, you know, it just, for folks like us, whether it be within an exchange or in a traditional environment, having a marketplace of options, more choices, with potentially more complexity associated with that has driven people like us to think about our business differently and make investments around that consumer experience. Not to say that we're ignoring the back end and all the, you know, the cut, the connectivity that it, that needs to exist within a, within an exchange, but there's a heavy emphasis around helping consumers get through that selection and management process. Yeah. And I, I, I think that, you know, early on, as, as we're still early in this whole game, uh, Scott, as we all know, you know, the early findings are consumers like to have the choice, but they need to have, to, to your point, the tools, the education, the communication to help them make those decisions, not just on the initial benefit plans, but then on, on the further decisions they need to make around their health care choices, it, you know, looking for the right accessibility and, and their health choices. Yeah, exactly. I mean, Doug, you and I have talked about this in the past. You know, if you think back to the days when 401ks emerged on the scene, um, you know, most Americans couldn't fathom trying to figure out where they were going to invest their retirement funds and all the various options that um, that became available to them. And, and a whole industry sprung up around helping people sort through those options. And I see very much uh, a similar phenomenon happening here. Uh, as I said, when, when we think about the things that we're investing in, uh, it, it is really around that consumer experience. And um, in, it'll get better, and I'm sure there's many in, of my competitors who are thinking the same way. But it's it, it, So, again, I think the, the private exchange 
conversation has really accelerated interest in this area and um it is certainly um forcing our hand to to um to be better and, and bolder in that area. Yeah, and you talked you, you just touched on the back end. I think the back end is incredibly important for particularly the employers and, and others and uh uh, talk a little bit about uh, you know what you guys are doing on the back end to really you know uh, help financial administration and other uh, you know tools on the back end. You talk about ACA as well. So talk a little bit about some of your tools in the back end administration. Yeah, it's it's you know it's really where the rubber hits the road, right? I mean, if you think about an exchange, it really is an ecosystem with a lot of of different stakeholders with disparate platforms and systems and and technological capabilities and so being able to provide a you know kind of seamless experience for folks who join an exchange is is a vital part of that and so you know we we invest heavily in in ensuring that we can deliver that level of seamless connectivity to all those stakeholders um you know you mentioned ACA um it's it's been incredible to watch the interest in uh tools that help employers navigate through the ACA complexities we we launched uh, our ACA module uh, earlier this year i think we had four or five webinars and quite frankly we just haven't been able to keep up with the demand there's just such an appetite uh as i said from employers to help them navigate through this and so you know, having an integrated tool along with the, all the administrative aspects that you need to, to operate an exchange or even a traditional benefits portfolio is is absolutely mission critical. And um, and so, you know, we've we've been in this business a long time, and and connectivity is something we're very familiar with. And so, being able to apply those principles and some of those core competencies to our exchange model has been kind of a natural extension of what we've done and and we'll continue to improve adding things like full blown treasury functions and and some of the the quoting and procurement and uh functions on the front end so that employers can shop online for for plans in the exchange just like uh just like employees do so yep. a lot of investment and again it's it's there's a lot of complexity there that quite frankly I think a lot of uh, exchange sponsors or people who are considering being exchange sponsors, frankly, miss. Yeah, that's right. Uh, talk about a little bit about uh, your view of the Cadillac tax and what uh, you know your client, particularly your employer clients, need to be aware of. Well, uh, we we certainly think that it's it's driving a lot of um, interest in in the private exchange models. You know, many of the most of the plans that um, uh, that sit in our warehouse on our uh, exchange are specifically to are designed to uh, address the the implications of of the Cadillac tax. Um, and I think that will drive interest or certainly more interest in uh, in the exchange with our customer base so uh, we we do think it's going to be a driver and um, we're having a lot of conversation people are planning around that today um, so we'll uh, we'll see if it if it ends up being a primary driver but early indicators are that it will be well, Scott, listen, uh, time always goes by fast when we get uh, get on a show together, and I really appreciate your time with us today and look forward to seeing you next week. I want to give you uh, a minute or so to kind of wrap this and leave our audience with a couple of takeaways, please. Well, um, again, I think with um, this rapidly changing landscape, um, you know, with the investment that we have, I would certainly hope that folks who are thinking about uh, moving into the exchange world or even adopting benefits technology that that we certainly would be on their radar. There's, um, you know, we we sometimes joke that this is a fairly crowded um, landscape out there, but quite frankly, there's there's very few players who can truly deliver a, a comprehensive solution in this area. And you know, I think we're one of them. And I uh, I'm hopeful the that we'll have a 
a great experience next week with you and uh, look forward to talking to your audience and, and contributing to some of the conversation that we're going to have on the panel next week. Thanks, Scott. Uh, we will see you in Baltimore. You have a great weekend. Uh, travel safe. Uh, and, and to our audience, uh, as Scott just alluded to, you can come and uh, hear, hear Scott speak and join him and his team uh, in their sponsor area at uh, Private Exchange Forum. Thanks, Scott. All right. Thanks, guys.